All right, for our next example, we have an exciting scenario where we have a police car chase. So, example, let's read it. A police cruiser approaching a right-angled intersection from the north. You can see the picture of what's happening. So the police cruiser is this one right here. He's approaching this intersection, which is the, in, the where the zero is. All right, is chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner and is now moving straight east. So this is the speeding car. All right. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north, when? This is our moment in time. So 0 0.6, mi 0 0.6 miles north of the intersection is this d distance here. So that's our y value. So they're telling us that y is 0 0.6 of the intersection, and the car, the speeding car, is 0 0.8 miles to the east. So they're using x as the eastern direction. x is 0 0.8 miles. So that's the information they're giving us. But it says when this happens. So this is a moment in time that we're interested in. You cannot use this information until after you have the related rates equation with the derivatives and everything done. This is plugged in after all of the calculus is done. If you plug it in now, you'll have no x and you'll have no y. You can't work with that because x and y are what are changing over time that you're going to be talking about. All right, the police determine with radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. So from the police car to the speeding car, this diagonal line, the hypotenuse, they know what the rate of change is. That's the 20 miles per hour, miles per hour. They're giving you that information. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, well, miles per hour, think of this as miles per hour. This is a rate of change. This is the rate of change of the distance y for the police car with respect to time. They're giving you that information um, at the particular instant of measurement. They want to know what is the speed of the car. Well, the speed of the car is the rate of change of its distance, which we're measuring with x for the speeding car, with respect to time. Speed, time is your variable that you're with respect to. This is what you're trying to find. So they're giving you information about y, dy dt, and they're asking you to find information about dx dt. So you need to relate x and y together. Well, let's look at our picture. In our picture, we have y, this is vertical distance, x is this horizontal distance. But if you connect the dots with s, because they're calling this dsdt, the rate of change of s, I don't know why they call it s, um, <clears throat> then you create a triangle. But not any triangle, this is a right triangle, because they specified that this intersection is a 90 degree angle, a right angle. Well, if you have a triangle, you can relate x and y together if you have information about s, which we do. We know what the rate of change of s is at a particular moment. How can we relate these three sides to each other? We can use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In our case, the most important, like always, is the hypotenuse. So that for us is the s. So x and y can replace a and b. Really doesn't matter which way. And s is going to be your hypotenuse. So that's how we relate the x and the y. Now, you can go ahead and take the derivative, but before you do that, let's ask ourselves if any of these three sides is a fixed value. So the police car is moving along the y direction. So y is changing as the police car travels. x is changing as the speeding car travels. And then s is the distance between the two. So as x and y change, s is also changing. So all three of these variables are actually changing over time. If one of them were fixed, you would plug it in as a fixed value. Not a fixed at a moment in time, but fixed for all time. But because none of them are fixed, we're going to continue with all of them. So we have a relationship between x and y. Now we need a relationship between their derivatives, dy dt and dx dt. And because we have s, we're also going to have ds dt that we need in our relationship, which luckily they've given us information on. How do we do that? 
and we use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So d dt. <clears throat> so if we take the derivative, derivative of x squared, power rule 2x, times the derivative of the x with respect to time. So in this case, x does not disappear. Be careful with that. Plus the derivative of y squared with respect to time. So power rule 2y times the derivative of the y with respect to time. Equals, same thing on the other side, power rule 2s times the derivative of s with respect to time. We were looking for which one? Uh, we were looking for dx dt, who we're trying to find. dy dt they gave us. They said that was 60 miles per hour, the race, the police car is chasing the other one at. So that's the rate of change of the police car. And then ds dt, they used the radar to figure out that that is 20 miles per hour. All right. Did they give us anything else? Particular moment in time. Oh, I forgot. Uh, dy dt, the y is actually moving down southerly, so we actually use a negative value for that. I, didn't, I forgot about that part. So dy dt, because the police car is moving downwards, southern direction, um, the negative y direction, where we need to use a negative rate of change for that. The speeding car is moving eastern, or in the positive x direction, so we use a positive rate of change for that value. What else? x, y, and s. Do we know? Oh, yes. So we have a particular x and y value. So x is going to be 0 0.8 y is going to be 0 0.6 at the particular moment in time we're interested in. All right, so everything is filled in except dx dt that we're looking for and s. We cannot have two missing variables. Well, we don't fill in dx dt because that's what we're trying to find. So how do we figure out what s is? Well, remember, we have one fixed moment in time. So if we fix times, fix time, we know what the x value is. 0.8, and we know what the y value is. We have a fixed triangle at that particular moment, so we can actually find s using the Pythagorean identity. So 0.6 squared plus 0.8 squared. So I'm just using the Pythagorean theorem here. Equals s squared. There you go. Now you can solve for s. So that would be 0.36 plus 0.64 equals s squared. <clears throat> so add those together and you get 1 equals s squared. So s equals 1. And we're going to use a positive one because we're talking about a distance between two vehicles, and not the negative one. So s is equal to 1. So if we plug everything in, we can solve for what we were looking for. So 2 times 0 0.8, so that's 1.6 dx dt, plus 2 times 0 0.6, so that's 1.2 times negative 60 equals 2 times 1, so 2 times 20. And we can use our calculator to work this out. So 1.6 dx dt minus 6 times 1.2, 6 times 12, that would be 74, equals 40. Bring the 74 around. So 40 and 74 make 114. Finally, we divide by 1.6. And we find dx dt is equal to click on, uh, 114 divided by 1.6 equals 71.25. I caught one mistake, so this is actually supposed to be 72, my bad. 72, so this would be, let's bring 72 around, we have 112, and then we divide 112 by 1.6. 112 divided by 1.6 equals 70. All right, 70 what? What are our units? So remember, x is a distance. T is a time. So in our problem, what were we using to measure distance and time? So distance is miles and time is in hours. So this would be miles per hour. So that means we found how fast the speeding car is traveling. It's 
speed of speeding car. And there you go. So another great example, another geometry tool would be, is what we use today, the Pythagorean identity or theorem. And you use this when you're trying to relate the sides. Notice on this problem there was no angle, so trigonometry did not help us at all. Instead, the Pythagorean was what we needed to relate the sides to each other. So write down your tools. You have trig, Pythagorean, and the similar triangles. Make sure you have these resources in your mind ready to go for any homework problem that might come up. So study hard, have fun, I'll see you in the next video.